I believe this stuff, you know. You call me crazy. But I believe in the name of Jesus. I believe that nothing should be raised above it. And I believe that I will be a part of the greatest revival of the history of mankind. Newsboys frontman Peter Furler had a problem. His ministry was killing his marriage. You can um, uh, be putting your ministry above your family. It's a huge mistake that a lot of senior pastors make, a lot of Christian musicians make, it's a lot of people that are in ministry. One of the biggest mistakes that the enemy loves you to do is to put your ministry first. And then what happens is you're going to make your family, your wife and your kids end up resenting anything to do with ministry. Newsboys had a humble beginning in Australia, but it has developed a massive and devoted following in the almost two decades since then. The romance between Peter and Summer Lefevre started when Peter attended a Bible study. My dad is Mama Lefevre. Some people really? might remember from a few years ago. And so this whole music lifestyle was not a new thing for you? So that didn't scare you? No, it goes back to my grandparents even. So um, the newsboys had come to Atlanta and they opened up for my dad's group, Mullen and Broken Heart. And my dad invited them back to a Bible study we did, a Tuesday night Bible study. And he came to the Bible study and that's how we met. And how long did you date court before you got married? Um, a year and a half. What did you and think of him when you first met Peter? Um, it was love at first sight. <laughs> now, Newsboys has one of the most high-profile bands in contemporary Christian music. As we lift up our hands, will you meet us here? As we call on your name, will you meet us here? We have come to the Peter felt the band was on the right track, but his marriage was headed for a train wreck. You can be not involving your spouse in your life. It was a big mistake I was making. I love the newsboys, and this is what God's called me to. And I think that was it, it was, was that I felt maybe left out of that. I think we had come to a place where we had acquired all the things you dream about, the nice home and the cars and all that and yet it was like if my mayor if I don't have my husband this is I can't enjoy this it's hard to enjoy this without him the lowest point was definitely um, where like Summer said you realize nothing else mattered you was it just an emptiness constant emptiness, emptiness completely um, you know you felt like how's this gonna work you can't you feel like it's hopeless you know I was probably doing a lot of things where you're just saying the wrong thing as a man, you can just say the wrong things and be so offensive. I think it was really me, you know, I mean, it was just that point of, uh, like I said, she's always just been faithful and rock solid. I think Summer's always thought this will work. My parents had divorced um, and we had, after we got married, we had seen them go through struggles and they divorced and I think that, uh, I really believe God used it for my good if, you know, because as bad as it was that I looked at that and I said, you know, I don't want that to happen and it made me want to work even harder at my marriage. When you see people that you look to, you know, go through, you think, well, what hope is there for us? And I think Summer's always been someone that was, she was stick with this no matter what. You know, when he says that I'm perfect and everything I feel like you know I look back and I think well you know what, what was I doing wrong I really feel like I put Peter even before God I was so concerned about being the perfect wife and having the perfect marriage and having the perfect home and and now I look back and I feel like that was so much pride ironically Peter and Summer's marriage was deteriorating while they were restoring their home in Franklin Tennessee there was a time when it was hopeless and I thought, you know, wow. I remember thinking I would have sold everything. If I thought if I could sell all this, anything to save my marriage, I would. She was really rock solid with me. I was just a flake. So that was me for many years, putting, thinking I'm going out saving the world. You know what I mean? But my family's falling apart uh, because she's not involved in it. And it was, it was, it was, it, there was God 
um, and then there was ministry. And I'd even say I probably got them the wrong way around a few times too. How important was it for the two of you to really get plugged into a local church? I tell you, it saved our marriage. You've got to just surround yourself with the strong. You're only going to be mm -hmm. strong if you surround yourself with the strong. And we're in fellowship with them. It's not like, it's not like this. Oh, here comes the pastor. Watch out. You know what I mean? And uh, it's more of their friends now. It's like uh, we we. Um, I feel comfortable around because they know everything about us. I feel like I've, our, my marriage is better than ever, and I just feel like I'm, we're growing in the Lord. And it just, you know, I look at what the enemy tries to throw at me. I'm going to turn this into something good, you know. And it's just, it's actually been a blessing to my life. I'm a different person, you know. It wasn't just like Peter changed, or you know, because we're one. I don't go on stage one night without first calling Summer if she's not there with me. I would go on the road with him so I could spend more time with him. And, and I started really sharing in it, and it totally blessed our marriage. Now I know what church is about. It's about people coming together that are tethered together. People who are disciples, that are being discipled and making disciples. Coming together to worship God. It's not about the trends, they'll all pass away. It's about sticking with people for the rest of your life, no matter what. And loving them out of reverence for our Creator.